Number 62. Under what circumstances, if any, does a sample of solid silver chloride, so AgCl, completely dissolve in pure water? Okay, so we have to think of what circumstances will there be no solid produced because you want to completely dissolve your AgCl. So when they say completely dissolve, that means no solids produced, right? No precipitate. So if that's the case, if we're talking about solubility and we don't want any of that solid to be produced, chances are we're going to have to work with our solubility product. So I went to the back of the book to find out what the KSP value is for AGCL, and it's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. Now from here, we should write a balanced equation. So they told us that we're starting off with solid AGCL. So that's how we always start off the KSP. It's always the solid dissociating or breaking down double arrow because we're talking about equilibrium into its two ions. In this case, it's AG plus CL. Silver is always a plus one charge and the halogens, chlorine is a halogen. If it's bound with the metal, which it is, will be the negative one. They're both charges, so that's aqueous and aqueous. The equation is already balanced, so we're good with that. Now let's just write the specific KSP equation. Remember the general one is this one right here. KSP just equals concentration of products raised to the coefficients. So in our case, the KSP would just equal the concentration of Ag plus times the concentration of Cl minus. No need to raise anything to, you know, any values here because there is just one of each, right? I have one Ag and one Cl minus. Now we do know the KSP value that we looked in the back of the book, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th but I don't know what the Ag plus and the Cl minus concentration is. That's when we just label them as variables. Let's start with the Ag. I say, I don't know how much I have, right? So I'm just gonna label it as X. And technically you would bring the coefficient down, but one times X is the same thing as just saying X. And the same thing for the chlorine. It would be one X, but since you know one times X is just X, we'll just leave it as X. And these are your two variables that are going to be plugged in. So Ag plus is x and Cl minus is x. So we got 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th equals x times x, right? And x times x is just x squared. So I'm just going to erase this and just say that that's x squared. Undo a square is the square root. So this one's pretty simple. So I get x equals, let's see, square root 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. I get roughly 1.26. That's good enough. Times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. Okay, so we have some type of concentration. Now keep in mind, if you are solving for x, this also can act as the molar solubility. Molar solubility is always talking about the initial compound, right? And we know that it's just equal to X because for KSP values, there's always just gonna be one of your uh, solid in your balanced equation. So your answer is always one X or X equals. So we know that at this molarity, this is the molarity of the AGCL. It's also the molarity of your ions as well, because they're both X, but this is specifically the molar solubility. And what this basically means is that this is the amount in which you will produce a saturated solution. Saturated solution is basically right at the cusp of when you first start making your precipitates or solids. So anything over your molar solubility, you're going to be a supersaturated solution and you will form solids. You went over your limit. But if you have a molarity that's less than this, you're unsaturated, which means that you could have added more. You could have added more molarity basically until your molarity reached this value, but nothing over. So what circumstance, if any, will we have all of our AGCL 
completely dissolve? The correct answer here is anything below that molar solubility. And in this case, the molar solubility, since we actually did the math, is so anything below 1.6, a 1.26 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity of the AGCL. So you could have any molarity up until that value. Because after that, you're going to start making your solids. And we don't want any according to this question. And that's the answer. Okie dokie. But I'm glad we went over what, you know, saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated means. Just is in terms of the molar solubility, the X value that you found out. All right. I really hope this helped out. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. I hope you have a guys. I hope you guys are having a great day. And I will talk to you later. I need a glass of water. My tongue is tied. Okay. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.